As you've just discovered, SDVOE technology relies on a tried and tested Ethernet platform. Unlike the matrix switch, we don't need to spend millions of dollars developing our switching infrastructure because network manufacturers have been taking care of that for over 40 years. During this course, you will learn why the OSI model is the backbone of an Ethernet network. The OSI model is a theoretical structure which forms the basis of communication for all network devices or hosts. Network hosts are pretty much everywhere, from your router to your network switch, your phone to your computer, your TV or even your fridge freezer. There's just no getting away from them. And yet, while we use these products every minute of the day, do we really know how they send data to each other? It's true that most of us don't need to know how it works. I mean, to my dad, it just, well, happens. And to others, it's magic. But to the world of Pro-AV, it matters. And yet still lots of us can't really explain it. So how do these devices communicate? Let's begin by taking a closer look at the OSI model. The first thing you'll see is that it's made up of seven layers. Layer one at the bottom and layer seven at the top. And each of these layers has a name. They represent the abstract model of networking called the Open Systems Interconnection Model. Any device which connects to a network is called a host or a node. And for the purpose of this course, I want you to imagine that each host has an OSI built into it. Now let's take a look at what happens when you want to get the Facebook homepage on your phone. We open up the Facebook app, we go to the homepage, easy, right? Wrong. Because without the OSI model, this process would be pretty much impossible. That's because the application, in this case Facebook, creates packets of data to send to the other side of the world. So that the Facebook servers can respond by sending your homepage back to you. On its own, these packets of data are only of use to Facebook. But in order to get these packets to the destination, each layer of the OSI model in your phone needs to add certain rules to get the data packet to where it needs to be. In networking, these rules are called protocols and each layer will assign certain protocols as it moves down from seven through to one. These protocols are placed into headers which are attached to the outside of the packet at each layer. You may already be familiar with some of the more common protocols used, such as Internet Protocol or Transmission Control Protocol, and so on. Look out for our other courses which take a deeper dive into the protocols used when distributing AV across a network. Headers play a really important role in the transportation of a data packet from host to host. When the packet reaches the physical layer, all the protocols required to begin its journey are contained within these headers. And only then is the whole frame containing the data packet and the headers ready to be sent to the next host. In this example, the phone is connected to a wireless access point. So the physical medium used to send the data packet is radio frequency. And when the wireless access point receives the whole frame, it will move up the OSI model belonging to the wireless access point. Each host works differently, and some hosts require more header information than others to do their job. For example, the job of a wireless access point is to shift the data packets to all the hosts connected to it. And to make this process as efficient as possible, it only requires information contained within layer two. So, when the frame packet hits the access point and is moved up to layer two, the access point will unpack the layer two header, make a note of the information contained within it, create a new layer two header and send it back down to layer one to move to the next host. Layer two contains the MAC address of the host. So in this instance, the wireless access point is making a note of the MAC address of the phone 
Then it creates a new layer 2 header, but this time places its own MAC address in there ready for the next host to note down. This concept of breaking down the original data into smaller packets, each with their own headers containing rules, is called packet switching. And each time a data packet is moved from one host to the next, the header information will be updated, while the original packet of data remains tucked up safely in the middle on the way to its destination. Along the journey, there are hosts which will read more header information than others like a router for example. In this case, the framed packet will be sent further up the OSI model of that router, allowing it to make a note of the header information at other layers before creating new headers with new information relating to the next hop of the journey. Once Facebook receives the data packets it needs, it will send back new packets containing the home page information originally requested. And thanks to the protocols contained within the headers, they will all get back to the application on your phone very quickly. So the next time you're using an app on your phone, spare a little thought for just how much work is going on behind the scenes to give you the information that you need.